Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 110. TidyX screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. And my name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick. And today we are continuing our discussion on uh, S3, S3 objects. Indeed, yeah. we are. So last week we did a bit of explaining how you can create S3 objects. Uh, going through how you use the structure function to initialize them, uh, and then like why you might use them. We kind of shows uh, a, a trivial example of how you create a custom print function to do that, uh, and then you uh, we showed how you can write create constructor functions, which allow you to kind of abstract away the needing of using the structure. Or, I mean, you still use the structure function, but it kind of abstracts it away, so the user doesn't have to use the structure function. They just go, "I want this object." gives it the correct information and it creates it for you. Yeah, exactly. And that, that seems kind of like a lot of a lot of effort, right? To do all those things, but there is a value in doing it. And we wanted to go through this week and probably next week to go through and explain a specific scenario that we came up with where this <laughs> actually makes sense to do it in. Yeah. Yeah. And we kicked around ideas of scenarios for a bit. And then this one was born out of um, a bunch of beers and uh, <laughs> the idea that we could simulate a tournament. Uh, so we're just thinking like sports tournaments, um, NCAA baseball, NCAA basketball, NCAA football, any of those types of sports tournaments where you have this sort of um, one team plays another, one team wins in each of those games and progresses on to play each other. And, and that sort of, um, you know, trickles down until you have a tournament winner. Um, so what we wanted to do was uh, again, over the next two episodes, um, explain the iterative process that we went through of like, well, how do we simulate two teams playing each other and, and what would happen in a game? And then how in the next episode, how do we take those outcomes and chuck it into an even bigger simulation that says, Hey, if we know that, the first round of the tournament sees these, you know, eight teams playing each other in this ordering. And we know that the winner of these two games then go on to play each other. How do we build that all down into a single, um, you know, a full, full scale tournament style mm -hmm. uh, uh, simulation? Exactly. All right, so let's get going. So as always, when, when we have these sorts of uh, episodes here, we want to have this problem statement, like, why are we doing this? And I'm saying the scenario for Patrick and I are, we're data scientists at some local sports betting company. We do not endorse you, uh, you know, betting. <laughs> this is, this is uh, you know, Thanks. your own, own life decisions on that. But uh, the season just ended for a local sports team, and they're about to have uh, a tournament. And we want to predict who will be winning the whole enchilada. Um, and so, but first, before we're able to predict that, we need to sort out how we're going to be simulating and who will win a single game. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing we need to be doing is how do you define a team? Uh, so we were able to, we already performed analysis, uh, theoretically, of uh, this league. And we have some numbers that to us indicate the strength and uh, standard deviation of a team's performance. So we, we already know and have a good idea of how we think that they behave um, generally, right? Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create this function that allows us to like kind of document that and record that. And so we have this function called new team. And so this, uh, this function will take the team name. So which team are we defining? the strength that we calculated for the team as well as the standard deviation of the strength of that team. And so it, these are the three arguments of our function. We throw it into a structure that contains a list that ha that contains the strength and standard deviation, which we'll use later to do uh, predictions on their performance, uh, the attribute of team name, and then the class of this object is called team. And so we're able to generate that. And now we have a bunch... So Really yes. quickly, though, can you explain, because we could easily create this same function and um, have it take those bits of information, those arguments, and make a data frame. Why in S3? The why in S3? In S3 here? is this allows us to reuse it and write functions further down the line that will be able to resample and re-simulate uh, a team's performance for us. And so here we're more trying to create a container 
that has the information that we need in order to generate that prediction um, repeatedly. So that we um, so further down the line, we're going to create a function where we just pass in the team, and it mm -hmm. pulls pulls the strength and standard deviation performance of the team and, and calculates and simulates a random pull of their performance across however many number of simulations. And so this cool. allows us to like consistently grab new simulations of the team mm -hmm. as, opposed to, as opposed to having it all predefined. Sweet. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, Here's our league. This piece. Patrick, Here's this our league. Piece. And <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I did this, but I decided to name every team some sort of hawk. Uh, so basically what we do is we have our team of eight, or, or sorry, our league of eight. And um, uh, in that function, that new team function, again, we just have to pass the team name. So they're all some type of hawk. And we pass a, uh, a strength, a team strength number, which is basically their, their mean strength across the season, their average strength, and then some sort of standard deviation. So how variable has that team been across the season? So you can see uh, most of the teams are relatively concentrated around kind of a strength of five or six. Uh, we have a really bad team in the Orange Hawks, and then we have a, a, a clear winner uh, in terms of strength as the Hawkeye team, but they are a uh, high variance team. So we don't really know what to think of them. Um, so we're gonna pass each of these into our uh, new team function. And so if we run that, uh, and then we just run like the Jayhawks and take a look at that, you'll see that uh, it's returning that structure that was set up there in um, in lines uh, 17 through 24 uh, in the code above. So we have the team strength, the team standard deviation, and then we have the attributes of that structure uh, of that S3 object. So we have the team name and it's a class of uh, team. And so we have that information now put into there and we can start to do things, right? So we can um, estimate the distribution of the team's performance. Uh, and we've done, if you want to review this stuff, we did like a six episode series on Bayes that basically started and kicked off. I can't remember which episode number it was, but uh, it kicked off with link, like- link up, up We'll put up a link, the right-hand yeah. corner up here. It kicked off with um, um, simulations and Monte Carlo simulations. Um, so if you want to review what some of these functions do. Uh, this predict team performance function basically uh, really easily just kind of takes the, the, the team, uh, the, the S3 object that we created above, and it's going to create whatever number of simulations that you want to run. We have a default to do 100, but you could easily do a million if you want it. That doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, and so within that function, uh, and this is what Ellis was talking about on why we use the S3 uh, object, is within this function, it's going to pull, it's a, we, we believe the data to be randomly distributed across the league. So it's going to pull whatever number of simulations you specify and the mean it's going to find within that S3 object of the team name, it's going to find the strength, their mean strength, and it's going to find the standard deviation. And it's going to run this um, uh, simulator. Uh, uh, now, remember, we, we haven't set a seed here, so you might get slightly different results than us. But if you're running enough simulations, um, the results are going to be nothing more than some rounding error. So uh, we'll go ahead and run that function and we'll, we'll give it a look at how it works. So if we run this on the Jayhawks, uh, there we have a thousand simulations of Jayhawks performance and um, just a, a vector of numbers we could you know, make this into a histogram if we wanted or a density plot or something like that. Uh, we could do all kinds of things to sort of expose the, um, uh, uh, oh, I need tidyverse, uh, we, or deep liar. Oh, wait, no, is <laughs> or just run hist, version? yeah, uh, no. You, oh yeah, there you go. Yes, new pipe, I do new have pipes. the right version of yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. Uh, so if we remember the Jayhawks had a mean of five and a standard deviation of three, I think it was, or something like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there they are. So, um, so we have a normal distribution, which is, again, that's exactly what we asked for using the R norm function. All right, cool. So now we have a way of simulating the performance of a team, given what we've observed across their season. And now we need to figure out a way of how to simulate a single matchup before we can get, and this is always good, when you're building these things is, is go iteratively before we can get to a full scale tournament. Let's just figure out how to simulate one matchup, one team versus another uh, zero sum game, mano y mano, who's going to win. Uh, Ellis, why don't you take us through that function? Sure thing. All right. So we have this run sim game function that takes in team one and team two. These are the arguments so that we can uh, 
clearly track those through our function and the number of simulations we want to run for that game so that we can have an like the more number of simulations in theory the the more representative it would be uh, so then when we first the first thing we do is we take and try to get a simulation of the team's performance across the n sims games and so for team one we'll run the predict team performance which we just ran which gives us the uh a vector of uh however many n sims we're running for team one and then we do the exact same thing for team two so we now have these two vectors team one and uh team two sims these are their performance across these thousand ten thousand games right and and sims is ten thousand at this point ten thousand games okay well how do we determine who is the winner of the simulated game well we're just gonna match them up and see on average or like for each game that we simulated did team one win or team two win based on the prediction of the power or strength that they had there and then we'll take a mean of that and so a mean of a boolean is going to give you like the so this is going to return us a boolean vector right of a one or true or false indicating yeah. did team one win or did team two win false being team two won. and if you take the mean of a boolean that's going to take the mean basically of a bunch of ones and zeros which then will tell us if it's greater than 0.5 greater than equal to 0.5 that means team one on average won more often than team two mm -hmm. and so we can say the winner of team one if this or team one won if the mean of this is greater than 0.5. Okay, now the rest of this function is kind of decoration and information that we're gonna print out so that we know what happened in this game. And so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate, okay, what is the percent number of wins that the team that won had? Uh, so if the winner is team one, we just rerun this, this guy here so we can get the um, percent of teams that they, or games they won. But if team two won, we need the inverse of that. And so this means we need to do the, here we just flip it around just because it's easier to visually see this. We mean if team two being greater than team one. And then we use the scales percent function to turn it into a nice percent symbol uh, so that we don't have to worry about adding percents and whatnot later on. Next, we want to get which team name is the actual winner. The once again, this is for printing out. And so we're going to say if team one is the winner, we're going to pull out the team name attribute from the team one uh, object or S3 object. But if team two won, we pull out the team name uh, attribute out of team two. And we're going to assign that to game winner. <laughs> this piece here is purely informational. It doesn't really do anything to uh, the function in terms of what it returns. Uh, this is just so that we can visually see its behavior. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste together Okay, this is the matchup that we had, team one versus team two, and we're putting their team name in there. Then we're gonna say, okay, who's the winner? Well, that's the, the game winner. And then we're gonna add a, a little sentence here explaining, okay, what is the percent of games they won? So we can get an idea of, was it a blowout or was it uh, actually kind of close? They were good teams, sim uh, similar to one another. And then we're gonna cat it out, which means it's gonna just put it out into the console. For us to view and then we have this final if else statement down here and this is now the function returning a value um, so if the winner of winner was team one it's going to return team one otherwise it's going to return team two we wrap them inside of an invisible and this makes it so that we can run this function and have it return team one or team two but not automatically print it and so we could call this uh the the standard Thing that you'll see inside functions if they if they are actually calling this is you'll see the return function and so we can run that and you'll see if we run sim game against the jayhawks and chicken hawks and we run 10,000 simulations it runs it it prints out the statement that we have here so the jayhawks versus the chicken hawks winner were the jayhawks they won 61 percent of our simulated games here but it also printed out the jayhawks in uh, object and we don't mm -hmm. want that and so a way you get around this, but you still want to have it return the value, is you use the invisible function in here. And so now when we run it, it still is returning the Jayhawk. So I could still, winner, 
<laughs> winner is still now an object, so it got assigned out. It just doesn't print it from the function because right now what we care about is simply the uh, this the statement here. Mm -hmm. And so now we can run for Riverhawks and the Fauxhawks. I think those 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 teams are a little bit closer. Yeah. Yeah. Five, so if you run it again, six. you'll get a different percent of time, 58, 58, 57. Because remember, we, we haven't set a seed. So each time we're getting slightly different values um, returned back to us. <clears throat> exactly. And so yeah. that is a how we could simulate a single game for doing this. Mm -hmm. Patrick, do you want to take us through this last piece? Yeah, so the last piece is like um, before we uh, kind of depart here and leave it till next week to talk about the simulation that runs the whole tournament is um, what if we just wanted to create like a fun function that basically played out random games. So basically it looked through the a, a, a list of teams and it just ran, made a random draw of two teams and said, hey, play these two teams together, run a simulation of a game, what happens? And so this random game function uh, basically does that. So what we did here was we, we passed in the three dots, the little ellipse. And so all that's saying is like, hey, this is a function where people are going to put something into it. Whatever. Okay. And then inside of that function, what we're saying is whatever they put into it, this random game function, make it into a list. And so that uh, that's what is going to allow us to pass a whole bunch of team names in. And then basically from here, it's pretty similar to everything we did above. So we say, okay, we've got a list of a whole bunch of teams. Take a random sample, se sequence along the number of teams. So here we have all eight. We could have had five. We could have had six. We could have like new teams, whatever it is. Um, it's going to sequence along those teams uh, and yank out two of them. We're saying replacement equals false because we don't want to have a situation where the Jayhawks play the Jayhawks. That wouldn't be realistic. And then once we've got two teams, we're going to run the, the sim game function that we just created above. And we're going to say, um, you know, using some uh, uh, list notation here, uh, we're going to extract out the, um, uh, the team name required information. Uh, from that game. So whatever two teams it selected, we'll run that function. Uh, 10,000 times. And um, so we run this and we pass in the random game function, our eight teams, and we get different matchups each time with different outcomes um, predicted. Yeah. So it's just kind of a fun way to, to look at uh, a bunch of random games if you wanted to. I thought this would just be kind of a fun, fun demo for that. Yeah. But yeah, but cool. that is how we can go from, okay, we have this problem. How do we go? And we need to simulate this tournament. Okay, where do we start? Well, we first need yeah. to find our team. Let's make that an object so that we can just pull information from that randomly. Now let's come up with how do you simulate the team's performance in the game? Great, now we have that. Okay, now let's simulate how, uh, let's simulate the game itself. And yeah. we can do that now. And the other cool thing is because our first function all the way up at the top is building uh, the S3 object instead of, let's say, like a data frame, if we get a new team into the league like the Ellis Hawks, we don't have to rerun that function with every single team um, in order to get them into the data frame of our, of our league. We can literally just... Uh, dump their team strength in. So for example, let's say uh, an example where I can think of that this could be interesting would be like either the NCAA tournament or in professional soccer, like the Champions League. Um, you might have different teams that are in those tournaments each year because of qualifying. Uh, so um, rather than always having, let's say, for Major League Baseball or the NFL or the NBA, where we already know the 30 or 31 or 32 teams that are going to be in those leagues, in those instances, we don't know who's going to play in the tournament. And so we want to have a function that is flexible enough to allow us to add whatever the heck team we want. And there we go. And I feel like you, how so, evenly matched are we? We're perfectly <laughs> evenly matched. Oh, okay, okay. So we're we're right at we're right at. Uh, yeah, I'm not that self centered that I was gonna hear it. If you want, there's no to, edge. There's no edge. You go, bud. Zero. Yeah. Boom. Oh. Boom. 
Wow. There you go. I'm the one writing the code. I get to do this. And I won. You win I won every, every time. Okay. <laughs> Good. It's basically a pro team playing a high school team or something. Look out, world. <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, so that that's some of the that's some of the flexibility of the S3 object um, within this scenario. And and next time we'll go over how to blow this out into a full scale tourney. Yes, but thank you all for joining us for 110 episodes. As always, my name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at, at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at, at OSP Patrick and at tidy underscore explained is where we both are on Twitter. Tidy dot explained at gmail.com is where we both are on Gmail. You can always open up an issue in the GitHub repo, though no one ever really does that because most people go to the YouTube channel. They like and subscribe and drop all their comments below. And of course, if you uh, enjoy our, our screencast and you feel like it's, it's helped you and you want to contribute to our um, future screencasts, we do have a Patreon page and we are all thankful for everybody who's uh, uh, made a donation very generous. Exactly. Thank you all so much and keep on exploring your world.